The reptile brain is our starting point for studying brain anatomy. It is situated deep within the skull. To be technically true, it is the home of our individual survival instincts. It is responsible for dealing with life-threatening events. The limbic amygdala, which will be discussed in the upcoming lecture, is positioned there and works closely with it. The misconception that this area of the brain was passed down from our reptilian ancestors has given rise to the phrase, reptilian brain. Obviously, this is not right. Since this area of the brain was also present in amphibians and fish, we likely need to trace our lineage all the way back to the first vertebrate. The reptile label also emphasizes the unselfishness of this brain region, which is concerned only with its own survival. Now, I know. I understand how unfortunate it is. For example, some crocodiles protect their babies by allowing them to hide in their mouths for all of these reasons. That region of the brain is also known as the primitive brain. To clarify, humans do not have a reptilian brain in their heads. It's an imagination being used here. That means there are just three ways in which the reptilian brain can react to danger. If you've heard of the fight or flight response, then you know what I'm talking about. There is, in fact, a third possible response, flight, fight, or freeze. Thus, in the Stone Age, when a caveman became aware that a pack of hungry wolves was chasing him, three things would take place. The first reason our cavemen would try to escape with wolves is that they are quite fast. Our legs are longer than theirs, but they have four of them. Therefore, it is practically impossible to beat them. The cavemen also had the choice of fighting their foes in combat, but only if the risk is not too great. It is possible that this strategy will be successful. In some situations, it is sufficient to terrify others by making ourselves appear larger, making a lot of noise, and throwing things around. Unfortunately, we are not living in the Stone Age, so we won't have many more sticks and stones available. And as for the wolves, they have a lot of them, and they have claws, sharp teeth, and powerful jaws. They are not looking good at all. Last but not least, our caveman has the ability to freeze. This means that he makes himself as small as possible so that the threat will not see him or find him uninteresting as a prey. The caveman's best bet for staying alive would have been to find a tall tree and climb to the top, where he could watch the wolves from a safer vantage point and hope they would give up and leave. Now, some 30,000 years later, neither our towns nor our rural areas are plagued by packs of wolves or any other hungry animals. Wonderful, really. There is no longer any need to rely on your primitive reptilian brain. Sorry, that's not exactly true. Even though it rarely happens in modern life, the reptilian brain is triggered in life-or-death situations. If you're trying to cross the street and a car suddenly appears in your path, your initial reflexes will be similar to those of our caveman. The first reaction is to flee or jump away. The second stage has begun. You may try stopping the car with both hands, as Superman does. That, however, may not be possible. The third reaction is to freeze, much like a rabbit under the spotlight at night. You'll simply stop moving altogether. If you're lucky, the car will pass you by. However, even when our lives are not in danger, our reptilian brain is aroused. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call stress nowadays. Stress is a reaction to a threat that is felt to be there. Now, I didn't say actual danger, rather, I stated perceived risk because we are perhaps the only animals who can worry about things that may never happen. We, therefore, still employ those same three techniques as sewerfront the caveman when we're under stress. As one runs, nervousness develops. Have you ever been anxious before a test or when giving a presentation? That stress is free. Ever come home from a stressful day at the office and start yelling at the kids or your partner over something unimportant? 
that's when fighting turns to aggression. That is, stress in action. Last but not least, free stress turns into helplessness and a huge, scary task that you don't even know where to start. You felt sad just remembering it. Well, that's the meaning of the word stress. So to sum up the reptilian brain, this part of brain is responsible for our individual survival instincts. When this part of the brain is activated, we feel stress, which can take three forms, flight, fight, or freeze, or in our modern world, anxiety, aggression, or helplessness.